everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we're gonna continue solving exponential equations. So, what if we're given something like this? Well, immediately we can see that the variable is in the exponent. We have to do something, we can't solve it. So there are two main methods. We've already seen the first method where we use exponent rules to get the same base. So we manipulate both sides to get the same base so we can set the exponents equal to each other, right? In this case, you can probably quickly see that we cannot manipulate these to have the same base. So we have to use our second method, logarithms. So why do we use logarithms? Well, one way to think of it is that logarithms and exponentials are inverses of each other. So we use one to basically undo the other. And that's generally the case. When you have exponential equations, you'll use logs to solve. We have log equations, you'll use exponentials. That's the, the general idea. Another reason we need to get this x out from up here, right? When this x is up here in the exponent, we can't solve this. So we have this cool property, all right? We have these properties of logarithms, and one of these properties is that if I have log base b of x to some power, n, that means what? Remember, the n could come out in front and multiply. So this equals n times log base b of x, okay? So if we can log both sides, then I can bring this x out in front. And that's exactly what we're going to do when we have something that looks like this, is log both sides. But what log base am I going to use, do you think? Well, in general, when I have, you know, I have 3 to the x power, the variable I'm solving for is being raised by this base 3. So I'm going to basically match up my logarithm base with my exponential base, and we'll see why in a second. So I'm taking log base 3 of both sides. Okay, so that means what? My x can come out in front and multiply. x times log base 3 of 3 equals log base 3 of 14. But remember how I said these are inverses of each other? So log base 3 of 3, what is this? Well, log base 3 of 3. Do you remember what logarithm means, first of all? This means 3 to the what power gives you 3, right? So in this case, I can rewrite it. 3 to the what power gives me 3? x equals 1, right? And in general, when the log base is the same, and I'm taking log base something of that same something, so I'll write log base b of b, basically, will always equal 1. So from here on out in this video and in future videos when I'm solving these, if I take log base 3 of both sides, I'm just going to immediately cross this out and write the x here because this is 1. So I'm left with x on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand si right side, I'm left with log base 3 of 14. And that's why we chose that log base 3 to take both sides, right? Because I wanted to get rid of that 3. If I picked log base 10 or something, I would end up with log base 10 of 14, and I would have to divide over, right? This is a lot simpler, so that's the reason I picked that. I guess it's not 100% necessary to solve but this is the cleanest answer. And if you wanna punch this in a calculator, you can, and you can you know, estimate it to two decimal places, whatever your professor prefers. But for these videos, I'm gonna leave them like this because this is the exact value for x. All right, so in this video, I'm just gonna do a bunch of more examples and I'll just explain each step. I encourage you to pause the video, try it on your own. And uh, there's more than one way to solve pretty much all of these. So if you do it a slightly different way and still get the right answer, then that's awesome. Just keep doing it the way that makes most sense to you. So. Given something like this, I have my variable x, that's what I'm solving for, and it's in the exponent of just one number, right? Just 6 to the 3x. So it gets a little tougher when I have multiple bases, all with exponents that have what I'm solving for. Then it gets tougher. But in these cases, it's not too bad. I can simply get rid of anything that's being multiplied, divided, added, and subtracted, right? Any constants. I can get rid of all that by bringing it all to this side. And I can isolate my base that has the exponent with the variable in it that I'm trying to solve for. If I can isolate that, I can basically take log base six of both sides, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna divide both sides by five. Divide both sides by five. So my fives here cancel, and I'm left with six to the three x. I'll write that over here. Six to the three x equals four. 20 divided by five, that gives me the four. So now I can take log base six of both sides, log base 6, log base 6. And again, the reason I do this, I'm lining up this base with this base because that's going to give me 1. So this 3x comes out in front being multiplied by log base 6 of 6, which is just 1. 
So I have 3x times 1, basically. And again, a trick you can use, log base 6 to 6, cross this out, you're left with that. That's perfect. That's how a lot of people teach it. So log base 6 of 4 is what I'm left with on the right-hand side. Now all I need to do is divide both sides by 3, and I have my solution for x. So x equals log base 6 of 4 over 3. All right, next example. So we're solving for x again. And the x is located in the exponent of just one number, okay? So same exact process. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides and then divide by 2 because I want to isolate this so I can take log base 9 of both sides. Hopefully you're starting to get comfortable and familiar with this process. As soon as you get comfortable, we add in more bases with that with the variables we're solving for and we get uncomfortable again. That's, the, that's how math works. So plus, uh, I'm subtracting 3 from both sides. I'm left with 2 times... 9 to the x plus 10 power equals 78, 81 minus 3, all right? Now I can divide both sides by 2 because I'm looking to get rid of this 2 being multiplied out in front. So 2 divided by 2, that's 1. That's how I cancel that. Divided by 2, let's see, what does that give me? 39. So I'm going to draw a little arrow here because I, now I have 9 to the x plus 10 power equals 39. Now, what if I do log base 9 of both sides? That's exactly what I'm going to do, actually. This log base 9, log base 9 of both sides. I'm left with x plus 10, right? Log base 9 of 9, those cancel. x plus 10, I'm left with x plus 10 equals what? Log base 9 of 39. I can't simplify that. I can punch it in a calculator, but... I'm just going to leave it like that. Now I subtract 10 from both sides to get my final solution for x. Minus 10 minus 10. So x equals log base 9 of 39 minus 10. All right, so this is similar to the last few problems, but now we have e. I figured I'd give one example like this since we see e a lot. It tends to confuse people, but it's really not too scary after all. It's just some number, right? So I'm still doing the same process. I'm going to move this to this side so I can take log base e of both sides. And we'll see what I mean in a second. Plus 5 plus 5. e to the x minus 1 is what I have left equals 10. So remember I said take log base e of both sides. Well, we have a special name for what that is. It's actually the natural log. So ln, right? So if I ln both sides... What ln is, is it has a base of e. So this does the same thing as if I were to, for the last example, right? I'm still canceling out this e. And I'm going to be left with x minus 1 out here in front. x minus 1. But now I have to remember to ln this right-hand side as well. So I have x minus 1 equals ln 10. So now I can add 1 to both sides. And I'm left with x equals the natural log of 10 plus 1. So even when you have e, the process is still the same, right? It's just some number. Don't be scared of e. All right, now we're getting to the harder examples. So in this case, I actually have two different bases. Both have exponents that have the variable we're trying to solve for, x, okay? So this is a little bit tougher, but it's still the same idea. We're gonna, we know we're going to log both sides because we got to get these variables down somehow. So we can either do log base 2 of both sides or log base 5 of both sides. So we can't eliminate both the 2 and the 5. I wish we could, but... We can't. So I'm going to choose log base 2 of both sides, but you can choose whatever you want. Log base 2 of both sides. Log base 2. So this x plus 1 comes out in front, and the log base 2 cancels the 2, and I'm left with x plus 1 out here in front. But I can't get rid of the log base 2 of 5, so the 1 minus 2x comes out in front, but the log base 2 of 5 is still there being multiplied. So I have 1 minus 2x. Be careful. Remember your parentheses because this whole thing is being multiplied. So times what? Log base 2 of 5. So now I'm trying to solve for x, and I have x in two different places. So what's probably going to happen is I'm going to end up having to factor x out. And we'll see how that works in a second. But first I'm going to distribute this in. Times 1 and then times negative 2x. So I have log base 2 of 5 minus 2x times log base 2 of 5. Okay, and this still is equal to x plus 1. 
So now I'm getting everything with x on this side and everything else on this side. So I'm going to subtract one from both sides. I might actually do two steps in one. Y'all think I can handle that? If I subtract one from both sides and add 2x log base 2 of 5 to both sides, both in the same step, just because I'm running out of board space a little bit. 2x log base 2 of 5. So I'm adding 2x log base 2 of 5 and subtracting 1 from both sides because that's going to get all the stuff with x's on the left side and everything else on the right side. So let's see if I can change colors here. So again, the plus 1, minus 1, those are gone. What am I left with on the x? On the left side, I'm left with x plus 2x times log base 2 of 5. On the right-hand side, this plus 2x log base 2 of 5 minus 2x log base 2 of 5. That's all gone. And I'm left with log base 2 of 5 minus 1. So I just did two steps at 1. I think y'all can handle it. All right, I'm going to factor out an x because these are not like terms. I can't just go combining these. But if I factor out x, then I can divide by whatever's left over, and that'll be my final answer. So I have x... What do I have to, let's see, what's going to be left, basically, is the way I think of it. 1, right? Because when I put x back into 1, I get back where I started, plus 2 times log base 2 of, at, of 5. And again, always check your answer. Plug this back in, I get right back to where I was, so I'm good to go. So this still equals log base 2 of 5 minus 1. My last step is just divide both sides by this 1 plus 2 times log base 2 of 5. Divide both sides by that. 1 plus 2 log base 2 of 5. So that's my final answer. It's going to be this. Let's see, 1 plus. I'm wondering if I should rewrite it. I think I will. 2 log base 2 of 5. So this is my final. So I'll write it up here. I have x equals log base 2 of 5 minus 1, that's up top in the numerator. In the denominator, I have 1 plus 2 log base 2 of 5. You cannot go canceling these out, right? This is this whole thing over this whole thing. You can't, don't go crossing out these. This is your final solution for x, unless you want to plug this in a calculator and get an estimation. That works as well. Alrighty, that's actually it for this video. If there's a demand for more of this, let me know in the comments. If y'all want more examples worked out, I'll happily provide another video. But hopefully this helped. If it did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe. Check out my channel if you want to make more brain gains. I keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you next time.